the heart of man needs a transplant, kind of a, a worldly type expression, but that's what the heart, that's what mankind needs. He needs a new heart. God wants to, is, is wants to change mankind's heart from stone to flesh so that he can be able to use it. And we're going to take a look at the, the, the wickedness of the heart, say to God. That's the one thing, that's why we need a change. Keep this in mind. If Jesus Christ had not come and paid the price for our sins, no flesh of any kind would have been saved, okay? Because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Now, keep this in mind. We were not born sinners, okay? When we came into the world, we were completely free of sin, but we were born into it and could not help, could not escape it because that was the nature of, hum of humanity because of the, the transgression of Adam and Eve in the garden. So had not, if it had not been for Jesus, all humanity would have lived their lives, died, and their souls would have gone into hell and ultimately into the lake of fire because there would not have been anyone to save us from that fate. Okay, so Jesus came and he made that, that, that sacrifice. Now we are free to live a godly life, even though we're still down here in this, in this world. We're still under the attack of God's enemy, who is Satan. He's still coming against us, but God has given us the power over the power that comes from the enemy. And that power that's in us, the Bible tells me, that is greater than the power that's, that, 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 that's, that's, that's great, greater than Satan's power. And uh, I, I, the scripture says, uh, uh, I'm not, I can't quote it, so I'm not going to try to say it. But I just want you to, to, to understand that what Jesus did for you, I'm telling you, saints of God, he, he deserves all of our attention, all of our praise, all of our glory. Everything goes back through him. And Bible tells us that in all of our ways, we are to acknowledge him. So we want to take advantage of that and just do God's will, God's way. And forget what's going on around you because they can't help you. No one can help you. And we're going to see that in a few of these scriptures on tonight. Now, the first one we want to go to is Jeremiah. Just take a look at the heart of man. We're going to see what God says about it because everything that the Lord did, he did it for a reason. He knew that mankind was going to fall. He knew the weakness in man. He knew that man was going to come. Look, he died before we even knew who he was. He gave his life for us knowing that we weren't going to accept him, but he died for us anyway because he knew that when Adam was created, Adam was created a perfect being, okay? And Adam was to live a perfect life in God, with God, in communication and oneness with God. And that's what he did. We don't know how long Adam was in that garden, you know, before fall. But we do know that everything that, got, that Adam uh, receive and as far as his knowledge and understanding, God gave it to him. And let me say this to you. It was a one-on-one -on -one communication thing. He wasn't writing any letters then. No, no, no notes. It was all God giving Adam what Adam needed to make his way through the garden and to name everything in the garden. Just like when Jesus was here, Jesus said, when my father speaks, I speak. When my father works, I work. It was the same way with Adam. So Adam was in a perfect relationship on earth with God as the angels were in heaven. But sin, okay, just like the, the with Lucifer in, in, in heaven before he was cast down. It, 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 the Bible tells us that sin, iniquity, it was, iniquity, iniquity was found in Lucifer and he was cast out. He lost his place in heaven. He was cast down to the earth. Adam was a born a human, perfect in every way, but iniquity found its way into his heart. And now here we are, suffering because of the fall of man. But God made a way for us to get back. So let's look at this now. It's uh, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. And I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I just want to start up here and come down to where I want you to hear. It says, let's start at the fifth, uh, fifth verse, uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 5. And Jeremiah, the Lord is dealing with Jeremiah to talk to uh, 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 the, the, the Israelites. And he says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, 
and whose heart departed from the Lord. The saints, I think that's a good good verse of scripture. Now keep this in mind. I don't advocate not going to the doctors, okay? There's, you know, there's medications, but the medications, you know, if you can stay away from them, good, because there's enough and there's enough natural things, okay, that are available to us that the med uh, medical uh, world won't let, won't, don't want to introduce. But there are things that you can do to take care of these bodies from a natural standpoint. But here's the thing. It says, thus saith the Lord, cursed is the man that trusted in the, uh, trusted Trust in man that make uh, flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. Because again, the doctors can't heal you. Okay. I think that's what I was trying to get to. The doctors can't heal you. No one can heal you. Jesus is the healer. Okay. So that's that's when we go to the doctors, when we take these uh, medications and these supplements, we're doing it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And say to God, if we do that with our whole heart, now I want you to hear me. If when I take a pill or you take a pill or whatever you take, do it in the name of Jesus Christ and give him an opportunity to do what only he can do and make that thing work for you. Okay. So again, we're putting our trust in the Lord. It goes on to say in the sixth verse, he shall be like the heat, uh, he shall be like a heat in the desert and shall not see when good comes but shall inherit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. This is the man who turns away from the Lord. So what he's saying there, you're not, you're not going to receive any good thing if you turn from the Lord. But seventh verse, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Listen to what's happening to the blessed man, that one who puts their trust in the Lord, regardless of what goes on. Drought may come, the parts ground, but he's saying that that person who puts their trust in God is going to prosper. They, won't, they will not be coming short of anything in any way. And I think Mr. King was dealing with that tree by the rivers of water. You know, that root goes down and gets gets its nutrition so that that tree can be strong and, and his leaves will be strong. So God is saying, look, if you put your trust in man, you're going to fail, okay? You're just going to fail because there's no hope putting your trust in man. But if you put your trust in the Lord, even during famines, even during storms, I believe Minister King did something about the storm too in one of these little nuggets. The storm is, is storm is an opportunity for God to prove himself to you. So again, saints of God, we want to put all of our hope, all of our everything, all of our faith, all of our attention in the Lord, not in anyone, not in your bank account, not in anything that's of the world or natural, because we are spiritual beings and we have to be led by the Spirit to live a spiritual life. Now we get down to what I want you to hear. Eighth verse says, for he shall be planted, he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Ninth verse, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So here's what he's saying in that. He's saying, look, don't go with your heart. You know, some, you know this expression we have, uh, I should have followed my heart. No, that heart is deceitful. That heart is going to give you some misinformation. That heart does not know without being regenerated. That heart does not know how to do good. Yeah, listen, and you know, all of your good intentions without Christ Jesus are as filthy rags in the, sight, in the sight of God. So again, we cannot rely on our feelings. Do you understand this? In all of our ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. In all of our ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. Listen, that's why a lot of uh, marriages are messed up, because people went in this marriage with the wrong wrong uh, uh, agenda, the wrong idea of what marriage is all about. 
You know, it just doesn't work if God is not in it now. And listen, with God being in it, there's still going to be trouble because you're still in the world that's full of trouble. But God is in that marriage. God is in whatever you give to him to be in, to take care of you and protect you and strengthen you so that you can get through it. Paul said, look, and look, God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. He said, when I get to a place where I can't do anymore, that's when God becomes powerful in me. Huh? Because now I got to give it to him. And now he can do what he was trying to do while I was trying to fix it. So we want to understand, saints of God, give it to the Lord right now. The Bible tells us to cast all of our cares upon him. Do it. Do it. Give him them, them relatives. Give him that sorry husband. Give him that sorry wife. Give him that, that job that won't, that, that won't treat you right. Give him all of your troubles. And watch him work these things out for you. Because that's just why he's here. That's why he died so that he could be available to us to help us through our troubled times. I'm telling you now, this thing works if we allow it to work. And look, it's working for somebody. <laughs> Listen, it's working for somebody. So again, you know, look, I think about the little old lady with the issue of blood. And look, look, uh, the reason she decided, okay, you might, I might have to go see this man, Jesus, because she heard of what he was doing all over the town, all over the place. Everybody was being healed. He was going into towns and cities and healing everybody who had an infirmity. And she got wind of this thing after she had spent all of her money. So I'm saying, look, keep your money and see Jesus right now. Yeah. And see him right now. And I don't care what kind of weight you're under. I don't care what kind of circumstance your face with. God is right in the center of it right now. Okay. He's in your fire just the way he was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got cast in. And on Nebuchadnezzar said, didn't we throw in three? He said, yes, we did, King, but I see four, you know, and one looks like the Son of God. Okay. So listen, you just give God your troubles. Huh? And don't be trusting, don't be relying on man, don't take man's word for it. And, you know, well, it, wait, listen, I want you guys to listen. Uh, Minister King did a, a little short nugget. It's a real briefy. It won't take up any of your time. But I tell you, you'll, you'll feel real good when you hear what God did for him. When it appeared like there was nothing going to happen from the time he was first interviewed till the time he was interviewed a second time. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You don't know your heart. God knows our hearts better than we do. God knows exactly what's in our heart. Exactly. That's why he's going to judge us from our heart. But judge from in and it's from within. That's where he's going to heart, uh, judge us. The Lord searches the heart. I, uh, the, uh, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Okay. Keep that in mind. Let's go. Mark 7, verse 21. And I'm going to read down to it. I want you to get a look at what's going on here. Because all these things that we're going to hear about right here down from eight, verse 18. I'll start at verse 17. But from verse 18 down, you're going to see what kind of heart you have without a Savior. Okay. Without having a regenerated heart. This is what we were all about. You know, and look, we, 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 we didn't think that we were so bad because we were just like everybody else around us. But everything that we did, even the good, okay, was not acceptable to God. Mark 7, 16. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, this is, God's talking about the ear in the inner ear, not, not the one on your head. It's got to go further than that. It's got to get into the heart. There's another spiritual ear. He says, let him, uh, uh, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house, from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing goeth, uh, go, whatever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile the man, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drawer, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Listen, for from, with, for from within 
out of the heart of man proceedeth evil thoughts, listen to this, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Listen, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Do you see what's happening here? That's why it's so important that we clean up this, in, this inner man. Huh? It is really important. And you know why Jesus said, you know, if you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. You know, some people think, well, what have I done? You got some mess in you that the devil is putting in you that's going to show itself one day. Okay. And that's why you have to get this thing constantly. You got to constantly be asking God to clean your heart. Do like David said, created me a clean heart. David was a righteous man. He knew he was a righteous man. And he was a righteous man when he committed that awful sin against Uriah and, and with Bathsheba. That's why when Nathan came to him and explained to him that you are the man, you know, and you got to be punished for this thing. God said, but he also told him, look, God is not going to cut you off because he should have been put to death for the adultery. But God, he said, God is not going to cut you off. But you got three things you got to choose from. And neither one of them were good, but he said, look, you know, I'm going to choose the, be the, the better of the worst, uh, you know, the, of the, be the best of the bad, because he, that was the only way he was going to get free, okay? But he knew what he was doing, but he was a man after God's own heart, even in that. So what I'm saying to you and me today, saints of God, always examine yourself with the word of God. Always examine yourself. And I like to tell people this. Sit down and think about all the people that you interact with and see how you really feel about them. I'm telling you, Saint of God, that is something that can really help you because you may have some, something may have happened to you. Somebody may have done something to you years ago that you never got straightened out. The devil took it off your mind. And when that person's name come up again, you think about that incident after all the years. And I got one, uh, I thank God for it. I don't know if this guy is still living, but it really had nothing to do with righteousness. But in my heart, I felt like I, I knew I'd done him wrong. I knew that I had done him wrong. And he had confronted me. I lied about it. And, I, and it, it just, it comes back to me. And I wish, I wish I had gotten it straight with it. But thank God for Jesus, because I repented and got saved since then. So that's going to be taken care of. But the point is, if we clean up all these things, these little things, these little weights and sins, the Bible says, that they're so easy to beset us, let us lay them aside. Okay? That's what we can work on. Do it, saints of God. You watch and see. You watch to see if your life don't get better. It, he'll just free up. He'll free you up. You won't have any things, that, you know, you won't have anything worrying, worrying you because you won't be a worrisome person to anybody else. Okay, uh, let me do let me do this part again. I just want you to hear this again. Twentieth verse: That which cometh out of the man that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceedeth evil thoughts. Here we go: adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Out of the abundance of the what? The heart, the mouth speakers. That's why we got to always check this heart with the word and ask God to clean this up, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. That's what we have to do. And that's for us to do. God has already made a way, but now it's up to, for, uh, up to us to take advantage of the way that it's made, get in it, and don't get out. Don't deviate. Don't turn back. Don't look back into the world because you've got you've God brought us out of the world so that we don't have to worry about what's going on in the world. Okay? Just stay with Jesus and watch him do what he, what he can do. Romans. Third chapter of Romans. We've been in Romans a lot, but there's something I want you to hear today. Romans 3. Okay? I want you to keep, it, keep this in mind. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot do right. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot do right. Okay. 
And that's why he saved you. That's why you turned your life around. And I want you to take full advantage of what was done. Okay? Because listen, you know it and I know it. That devil's still trying to pull you back into your world. That devil's still having us do some of the things that we know we're wrong, but we just do them and then we're going to repent. <laughs> let's, let's just don't do them. Don't be that one that puts your, your Holy Ghost on the battle and go get somebody told, you know. Just be careful. Be careful, saints. Listen. Romans 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are altogether become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That was a indictment on all of humanity. But thank God for Jesus, there are those who are now been taken out of that category and put into a sanctified, justified life in Christ Jesus. Where are you now, saints of God? I, I can't hear you, but I'm going to tell you where you are. Your life is hidden in Christ Jesus in heavenly places right now, okay? Right this minute. You are safe, sealed, sanctified, and justified because you accepted the blood sacrifice on Calvary's cross. You went down in water to get that old Adam nature washed away, and God filled you with his spirit. It is the exact same spirit that spoke everything into existence. It is the exact same spirit that was in that body of Jesus Christ performing all those miracles. It is the exact same spirit that left him on the cross to die so that that sacrifice could be made and the, and the penalty could be paid. And he went into the grave and spoke to all those saints that died waiting on, on Jesus. And he got all of them. And once he got all of them told, look, I'm here now. <laughs> look, he probably saw Joe. Joe said, I know I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him for myself. And I bet he found Job and said, here I am, okay? And you said it, and here I am. And then he came out of that grave and went back into that body and resurrected that body, brought it back to life. And he went in that body, went for a few more days on earth, preaching and teaching. And all of a sudden, that with that same body, that, well, it wasn't the same one, it was the glorified body. He took that same glorified body and he was, he was risen right in their in their presence okay the apostles were standing there talking to him watching him and they watched him go up the angel said the same jesus that you see going into heaven is going to come in, in just in like manner as you see him going in there okay that's the one that's in you right now and that same jesus is going to come and he's going to and your spirit is in him and he's going to call his spirit out of the earth and we're going to get caught up just like that Somebody said, I, I don't see how you can do that. No, you don't, because you ain't God. Can't, you can't figure that thing out. Huh? And, and nobody can figure out God out. Huh? He's a spirit. He's everywhere in everything. And he's, he, he, look, and he's here for us. And you took advantage of it. So take advantage of it and live in Christ Jesus. All right, listen, I just got a few verses here. Now, what I wanted you to hear, we just went through but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven verses. I'm going to read them to you. I'm not going to go to the chapters. I'm going to read them to you. And I'm just going to ask you guys to go you know, in your own time and read these ones and just write them down as I give them to you. You can start with Jeremiah, Mark, and Romans, what we just went through. But also in Romans 1, verse 21. Okay, now I'm just going to turn to them just to give you those verses. And then you go and read them for yourself so that you can get a full understanding. This uh, verse 21, Romans 1, 21, we just did this not too long ago, but I just want you to hear the condition of the heart. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. See what's happening here? The foolish heart. The, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So we, we don't want to be like that. But we know better than that. I don't even have to go that far back. We know better than that. But what I'm saying to you, is, look, just tighten up your walk. 
that enemy is coming after you now. Tighten you up. Let me share something with you. I wasn't going to tell you this, so I'm going to tell you this now. This morning, now I know this was a visit from a demon spirit. I know this has to be. I'm laying in my bed. I'm waiting to get, you know, I wasn't asleep, but I was just laying there. And something was breathing in my ear. And it was on, look, I, my bed is right up against, not our guest, but right near the wall. So there wasn't no, wasn't room for nobody to be over there. And it was breathing in my ear, you know, and I'm breathing, you know, and I'm listening for Annie B to see if it's her, because I'm saying, you know, maybe sometimes she's breathing and maybe it's kind of getting on my side like a tranquilist, tran, tran, you can't, I can't say tranquilist or whatever. But here's what I want you to understand. This thing was real. And it was breathing as inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And I stopped breathing just to make sure I wasn't hearing myself breathe. And this thing kept breathing, just inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then look, I, I looked, since I did, I took, did my ears, you know how you do your ears, and popped them as thick. And there was something there. Now, I don't know what it was there for. I don't know why. I do know why. It was trying to distract me or put fear in me. But I, it, it happened. And the reason I'm telling you this is because without Jesus Christ, okay, these kind of things can scare you. Huh? Without Jesus Christ, all these things are going to come against you. Things are coming against you that God is keeping you from. Some things you don't even get to see and know because the angels are camped around about you. But I know that this was a spirit of some sort. It didn't, it wasn't there to scare me, but it wanted me to know it was there. And it knew that it had to be something because there was no space between my bed and the wall for anything to be breathing. And listen, if anything was there breathing, you know, that I that could touch me and get me, I was getting up out of there. I don't know if I was gonna leave my wife or not, <laughs> but there was nothing there. Okay. But I heard it. And I just know that God knows that these things are going to happen to us the closer we get to the Lord. And if we give God all of our time, then the devil is still going to work extra hard to try to distract you, try to frighten you, try to turn you away. Stay the course, thank you, God. Just stay the course. I'm telling you, just stay the course. Because this, this, this look, the, the, the heart of man is darkened, okay, because the enemy has Blinded his eyes. That's what the scripture tells us. They don't see the light because they've been blinded by sin. And that's why he's got people doing whatever he wants them to do. Now Matthew 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. Okay? That is it. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay? So listen, if evil, if there's evil treasure in your heart, that's all you're going to be able to give it, get out. Because that's what's in there. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in the heart is coming out, okay? So that's why we want to keep good things in there. That's why we want to, we want to keep a, a, a forgiving spirit in there. We want to keep a peaceful spirit in there. We want to keep a loving spirit in there. We want to keep a helpful spirit in there. I, mean, I just want to say this real quick, too, about my, my sister-in-law. She has, God's given her a gift of helps, okay? And you know, and that's a gift from God. And she is the type of person that will help anybody. And and the the, the the whole neighborhood, the people were coming from all over, different areas, from traveling long distances just to be in that celebration because of her, <laughs> you know, because if God is just rewarding her for the work that she did for him, if, if it's in you, let's work it for the Lord. Let's do the good things, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, do the good things, let good things come out. And God is going to take care of the saints of God if we do that. Uh, Psalm 51, verse 3 here says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, 
that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. So this is something we have to acknowledge too, that we're born sinners. No, we were born into sin. Okay. And we could, we had, we had no other way to live except the sinful life, which again takes us back to what took, what took place on the cross. So you are free from that. Okay. So don't let that sinful nature, that sinful uh, 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 spirit get into you and stick. You know, he's going to come, but don't let him stay. You know, just look, get it over with. Repent, get it over with, keep moving. Goes on to say, behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that my, the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Here it is. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Every day, that should be our prayer. God, make sure I don't do anything wrong today. Fix my heart so that I can do your will all day long. Okay, don't worry about tomorrow, and you got to forget about yesterday. It's today. I got to live godly today. Anything that I didn't get cleaned up yesterday, I got a chance to do it today and keep moving forward. Okay, because this thing, and look, this thing works if we work it. Huh? I think uh, uh, there's one of Minister King's little catchy phrases, work the word, <laughs> you know, do the things that the word is calling for. And you see, God will do his part. He just can't help but do his part because he is God. And he is his word, and he's going to do whatever his word says. And if we look at the promises that are in this book, they're all for us. And when we get to the end of the book, we're, we're, we're winning. We're, we won. Okay, so let's say the book. Isaiah 64, verse 6. All right, let me read down to it. Verse 64, starting at verse 4. But since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, Neither hath the eye seen God, O oh God, besides thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. In, the, in, those, uh, in those is uh, continuance, and we shall be saved. All right, listen. But we all... But we are all as unclean things, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we will and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. We're all we, we, we look and and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Six verse again says, But we are all as an unclean thing. So don't be setting yourself up. I know you don't. I'm just saying this. They will try to make you think that you're somebody. But again, we are nothing. We're nothing but grass and, we're, and dust. We're going back to dust. The life that's in us is going back with the Lord. The life that's in us is going to live after these old vessels die. But where, or where we live depends on what we do with God's word now. Okay. So again, look, stay the course, thank you, God. Stay the course. Psalm 10, verse 11. It says, He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see. Okay, this is a foolish man saying that God don't see the wrong that he does. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou shalt not require it. So this again, says your God, this is the thinking of mankind. People think that God is not going to do the things that God said he's going to do. All the promises, the, the, the righteous, the, the, the good, and the, and the bad. One scripture says, behold, this, the, the goodness of the Lord and the severity. So as good as God is to mankind, that is how severe the punishment is going to be if, if, if mankind refuses to follow the Lord. 